Hi all the students. Today we are going to study CSA, CSMA with collision detection. That is the carrier sense multiple access protocol with a feature of collision detection. Now we have already studied the two versions of CSMA which is your persistence and non-persistent CSMA. And both these protocols are an improvement over the ELOHA protocol. This also we have seen. Why? Because they ensure that no station begins to transmit when it senses the channel busy. As you know that in the case of ELOHA protocol, whenever any station wanted to transmit, it transmitted the data without uh, bothering about the fact that whether some other station is uh, transmitting its data to the same channel or not. So at least the persistent and non-persistent CSMA had the courtesy to check before sending its data to see if the transmission channel through which they would be sending their data is busy or free. Right. So definitely uh, uh, in such a scenario, the persistent and non-persistent CSMA were an improvement over the ELOHA protocol because here the stations were sensing the channel before transmitting their data and if they found the channel to be busy, that means if they found that the channel was already carrying some other stations data, then they stopped uh, and did not send their data. Now CSMA CD is a further improvement over the these two uh, versions of the CSMA protocol. The CSMA CD or the carrier sense multiple access protocol with collision detection as we call it, it improves the persistent and non-persistent CSMA further. How? In CSMA CD protocol, the stations abort their transmission as soon as they detect a collision, right? Now, in case of persistent and non-persistent CSMA, you saw there was no uh, way out to check whether a collision had occurred or not. Once the data had been transmitted from the sender's side, then there was no way to abort the transmission in between. There was no way to find out if a collision had occurred or not. But CSMA CD finds out or gets to know about a collision and as soon as it finds that there is a collision these stations which are using the CSMA CD protocol abort their transmission as soon as or the moment that they detect a collision. So this is an improvement over the persistent and non-persistent CSMA. So basically if they abruptly stop their transmission in between or they abort their transmission after knowing about a collision, so this definitely means that the two stations sense the channel to be idle. Only then they began transmitting and then they begin transmitting simultaneously. So okay now you, you will ask this question that if the stations are sensing the channel and if they found the channel to be free and they transmitted then, then how did the collision take place? The simple answer to this question is that two stations may be willing to transmit the data at the same time, right? The transmission channel, if I assume is free right now, in that case, both these stations will sense the channel at approximately the same time. And when they sense the channel at the same time and the channel is idle or free, both of them will find that the channel is free and both of them will presume that they can transmit their data. Now the moment they transmit their data together at the same time, they will take a collision. So this is how collision can take place even after sensing the channel free by two stations, right? So in such a case, when they get to know, now in such a case, when these two stations get to know about the collision, they rather than finishing the transmission of their frames, will abruptly stop the transmission there and then as soon as the collision is detected, right? So the stations will not allow the transmission to complete. They will rather abort their transmission the moment they get to know about the collision. So quickly terminating the damaged frames because even if they do not terminate or abort the transmission in between, the frame will be garbled out. All right. So there's no point transmitting such a garbage frame. So the best option is then to terminate the damaged frames 
and this further saves time and bandwidth because if you transmit such damaged frames this will uh, waste your time as well as the bandwidth of the channel so if the stations quickly terminate these damaged frames after collision this would obviously save the time and the bandwidth of the channel now the csma cd protocol is widely used in the lans or the local area networks in the mac sub layer you know the mac sub layer or the medium access sub uh, control sub layer is a sub layer of the data link layer the data link layer is further divided into two sub layers one is the mac lab, uh, sub layer and another is the logical link control sub layer so the csma cd protocol is used in the lans in the mac sub layer of the data link layer now uh, if we look at this figure through this we will be able to uh find out or we'll be able to see that the csma cd protocol can be in one of the three states out of contention transmission or idle big at any point of time at any given point of time the csma cd protocol will be in one of the following three states either in the contention state wherein all the stations are willing to transmit either in the transmission state where one or two stations are transmitting or either in the idle state where no station is transmitting any data right so if i look at the figure this is frame t0 represents the end of the frame that means this is the time when the frame has been successfully transmitted then this these slots that that you can see are the contention slots wherein the uh, stations are willing to transmit and sensing the channel then after the contention slot comes the frame transmission then again contention slot then again frame transmission then there may come an idle period wherein no uh, station is sending any data because they found the ch uh, channel to be i uh, busy then there is a contention slot and then the frame is being transmitted so basically if i look at the figure above here you see t0 the point mark t0 at this point you can say that the station has finished transmitting its frame right because this is representing the end of the frame this is at the end of the frame hence i can say that at point t0 the station has finished transmitting its frame fine now any other station having a frame to send may now attempt to do so so at t0 when the station has finished transmitting its frame that means the channel is idle again so at this point of time that means at time t0 any other station that is willing to transmit its frame or that is having a frame to send may now attempt to transmit its frame now at this point if at this point that is at time point t0 two or more stations decide to transmit simultaneously of course there will be a collision now how do the stations detect collision collisions can be detected by looking at the power or pulse width of the received signal so basically the pulse width or power of the received signal is checked and it is compared to the transmitted signal right the signal which is transmitted and the signal which is received if the pulse width of this transmitted and received signal are same then no collision has taken place but if the pulse width of the transmitted and received signal are different then definitely a collision has taken place and no further transmission will be allowed in that case because the stations will abort their transmission there and then now after a station detects a collision once the collision has been detected obviously you know what it will do it will abort its transmission then after aborting its transmission obviously it always wants to send its data if not now after some period of time so after aborting its transmission it waits for a random period of time all right and then tries again assuming that no other station has started transmission in the meantime so therefore the model for the csma cd protocol will consists of alternating contention and transmission periods that is transmission then a contention period then transmission then a contention period with idle periods occurring right when all stations are quiet when will the idle uh, periods occur when all the stations are quiet that means basically they are waiting for a random amount of time example for lack of work either when there is no work 
no data to be transmitted or when they are waiting for a, a particular uh, amount of time for a random amount of time. Now, uh, if we look at the details of the contention algorithm, right? So, how is the contention algorithm implemented? Now, if I suppose that two stations both begin transmitting exactly at time T0. Now, you know T0 is the time at which one station has finished transmitting its frame. That means a frame has been successfully transmitted by one station. That means at this particular point, another station who is willing to transmit can transmit its frame. Now, how long will it take to uh, the station to realize that there has been a collision? At time T0, a station transmits its data or it starts transmitting its frame. So, if in case a collision has taken place, how long will the station take to realize that there has been a collision? So, the answer to this question is that uh, it is very important in determining the length of the contention period. The answer to this question lies in what is the length of the contention period and hence what the delay and throughput will be. What is the delay? What is the throughput? All these factors help in determining the amount of time in which a station will realize that a, a collision has occurred. The minimum time to detect the collision is just the time it takes the signal to propagate from one station to another. Quite obviously, so the minimum time that we can estimate for the station to identify or to find out that a collision has taken place is the time that is taken for the signal to propagate from that particular station to the receiving station. Okay, so based on this reasoning, one might think that a station not hearing a collision for a time equal to the full cable propagation time after starting its transmission could be sure that it has seized its cable right so if uh, uh, for that particular time during which the data or the frame was transmitted from the sender sending station until the time it was received by the receiving station if for that duration of time no uh, collision uh, is heard by the sending station so in that case, the station can pretty well assume that it has seized the cable. Now what do you mean by seizing the cable? It means that all other stations knew that it was transmitting and hence those stations would not interfere and hence the success, uh, there was a, a successful transmission of the data frame. For that reason, the collision did not take place. Now if I consider the following worst case scenario. If the time for a signal to propagate between two farthest stations, if I assume the farthest of two stations and if I assume the time taken for the signal to propagate from between such farthest stations to be tau, then at T0, T0 is you know the time at which the station, uh, one station has finished transmitting its frame. So at time T0 or at point T0, one station begins transmitting, right? Then at tau minus exponential, time and instant before the signal arrives at the most distant station, the station stops. But the little noise burst caused by the collision does not get back to the original station until what time? Until twice the propagation delay minus the exponential time. Because we assume that the signal trans is transmitted from the sending station to the receiving station and then the collision if it takes place is heard again from the receiving station to the sending station. To, so the total propagation delay in that case would be twice of tau which minus the exponential time. Right. So in the worst case scenario a station cannot be sure that it has seized the channel. Right. So if this if it has uh, a collision has taken place and it could not hear the collision. So in that case or it heard the solution uh, collision even in that case the station cannot be sure of the fact that it has seized the channel until it has transmitted for twice the time of the propagation delay which is twice 2 tau without hearing a collision. So if for this period of time it has not heard the collision only then it can be sure of seizing the channel otherwise it cannot be sure whether it has seized the channel or not and the uh, transmission has taken place successfully or not. So hence in CSMA CD, a station with a frame ready to begin transmission 
you know senses the channel first of all and then starts transmission if it finds the channel is idle otherwise if it finds the channel to be busy the station can stop itself or persist itself and then use the back of algorithm to wait for a random amount of time so what is this random amount of time that means for how long the station will wait before sensing the channel again this is determined using the back of algorithm so this back of algorithm or the binary exponential algorithm is such that in this algorithm first of all the time is divided into discrete time slots right so discrete means which are not of the same length the length of the time slots can vary so with the length of the worst case propagation time the worst case we are considering the length of the worst case propagation time that is the propagation time between two farthest lands or two extreme ends of the land which we know is twice of the propagation delay or t to tau so in such a case if i assume that okay uh, the moment two stations begin transmitting the collision took place so that was the first collision so after the first collision in this system each station will wait for zero or one time slot right out of the two stations each station will wait either for zero or one time slot before trying transmission for the next time right so it may happen that both these stations wait for zero or one time slot or it may happen that station 1 waits for the zero time slot and station 2 waits for the first one time slot right so if two stations that have previously collided select the same random number that means they did not choose the different random numbers rather they both chose the zero time slot or the first time slot in that case it is quite obvious that the collision will be repeated so if again the collision has taken place that means this is the second collision this time so that means after the second collision the station will select how many random uh, uh, will uh, select how many random numbers 0 1 2 3 that means the stations these two stations will now randomly wait for either the 0th first second or third time slot and wait for these many number of slots now again it may happen that both these stations either choose different time slots or they may choose the same time slot which could be the 0th first second or third time slot so again if both these stations choose the same time slot so obviously there will be a collision again right so that means this collision will be the third collision between these two stations so that means if the process of collision will occur repeatedly then the random number interval how will you decide the random number interval in that case it would be between 0 and 2 to the power minus 1 for the ith collision that means i here represents the number of collisions so if the number of collisions are 1 so the random time interval between uh, would be bit, uh, between 0 and 2 to the power 1 minus 1 if it is the second collision then the random uh, time intervals would be between 0 and 2 to the power 2 minus 1 similarly if it is the third collision then the random waiting period or time slots would be between 0 to 2 to the power 3 minus 1 and so on for the ith collision which could be the second third fourth fifth any collision right and this number of slots will be waiting time for the station unless they have successfully transmitted their frames without any collision so this is all about your csma cd protocol